Introduction. Epilepsy is a common neurological disorder in dogs, characterized by a predisposition to generate epileptic seizures ES. These seizures can arise from idiopathic or structural causes. Idiopathic epilepsy IE is diagnosed by exclusion, typically based on the age of onset, normal biochemistry, and unremarkable neurological exams. Structural epilepsy, STRA, involves identifiable intracranial pathology such as neoplasia or vascular abnormalities. Effective treatment and monitoring of epilepsy are crucial to managing this chronic condition in dogs. Phenobarbital PB is a widely used first-line anti-seizure drug ASD in veterinary medicine. Known for its efficacy in 60-93% of dogs with IE. Despite its effectiveness, additional ASDs are often needed when PB alone fails to control seizure activity adequately. PB works by enhancing the inhibitory effects of gamma-aminobutyric acid and decreasing neuronal excitability. However, it also induces hepatic enzymes, which can lead to increased drug metabolism over time. Zenisamide, ZN, is another ASD used either alone or in combination with other medications. It is especially common in Japan as a first-line treatment and is used as a second or third-line treatment in Europe and the United States. ZN's mechanism of action includes inhibiting sodium and calcium channels, enhancing GABA release, and potentially increasing dopamine and serotonin synthesis. Despite its benefits, the interaction between ZN and PB, particularly how ZN affects serum PB concentrations, has not been extensively studied. The current study aims to evaluate the effect of oral ZN treatment on serum PB concentrations in epileptic dogs. This investigation fills a gap in existing research and provides insights into managing dogs with epilepsy on combination ASD therapy, materials and methods. Study Design and Population This retrospective study reviewed medical records from April 2017 to October 2022 at the Osaka Prefecture University Veterinary Teaching Hospital. The study focused on dogs diagnosed with epilepsy that receive ZN treatment concurrently with PB. Inclusion criteria required dogs to have had a confirmed diagnosis of IE or STRA based on clinical history, neurological examinations, and advanced imaging, MRI or CT. Dogs also had to have stable PB dosing for at least one month prior to initiating ZN treatment. Any dogs with incomplete medical records or those that received other ASDs concurrently were excluded from the analysis. The diagnosis of IE was established in dogs aged 6 months to 6 years that had unremarkable neurological examinations and no significant abnormalities on blood work or imaging studies. STRA was diagnosed in dogs of any age with identifiable intracranial pathology on imaging studies. All dogs were monitored for at least 6 months following the initiation of ZN treatment, allowing for adequate assessment of drug interactions and clinical outcomes. Data collection and analysis. Data were collected on patient demographics, including age, breed, sex, and body weight. Detailed information on seizure history, type of epilepsy, and initial PB and ZN dosages was also recorded. Serum PB concentrations, SPBC, were measured at baseline, prior to ZN initiation and at various intervals during ZN treatment. Adverse effects related to PB or ZN were noted, including signs of hepatotoxicity, sedation, ataxia, and gastrointestinal disturbances. Any necessary dosage adjustments of PB during the study period were documented. Data were analyzed using linear regression models to identify significant predictors of changes in SPBC. Statistical significance was set at P less than 0.05. Results. Patient demographics and clinical data. A total of 32 dogs met the inclusion criteria for the study. The median age of the dogs was 5 years, with a variety of breeds represented, including beagle border collies, and mixed-breed dogs. There was a slight male predominance, with 18 male and 14 female dogs included in the study. Of the 32 dogs, 20 were diagnosed with IE, and 12 were diagnosed with STRA. The median duration of PB treatment prior to ZN initiation was 8 months. The median initial PB dose was 3.5 mgkg day, and the median initial ZN dose was 10 mgkg day. Serum phenobarbital concentrations. Before ZN treatment, the median SPBC was 23.5 microgram ml, range 1535 microgram ml. Following the addition of ZN, the median SPBC increased to 28.5 microgram ml, range, 2040 microgram ml, indicating a significant elevation in serum PB levels, P less than 0.01. The increase in SPBC was observed as early as two weeks after starting ZN and persisted throughout the study period. Individual patient data revealed variability in the extent of SPBC elevation. For example, one beagle, initially on 3 mgkg day of PB, had a baseline SPBC of 25 microgram ml which increased to 34 microgram ml after 4 weeks of ZN therapy. Another case, a mixed breed dog on 4 mgkg day of PB, showed an increase in SPBC from 22 microgram ml to 30 microgram ml within the same time frame. Adverse effects and dosage adjustments. Adverse effects related to PB, such as sedation and ataxia, were reported in 25% of the dogs following the addition of ZN. Three dogs developed signs of hepatotoxicity, necessitating the discontinuation of ZN in two cases and PB dose reduction in one case. Other side effects included gastrointestinal disturbances in four dogs, which were managed conservatively. Due to the significant increase in SPBC, PB dosages were adjusted in 50% of the dogs to avoid potential toxicity. The median reduction in PB dosage was 0.5 mgkg day. 
No dogs required an increase in ZN dosage during the study period. Discussion. Interpretation of findings. The significant increase in serum PB concentrations following ZN treatment is a critical finding of this study. This elevation can be attributed to the potential pharmacokinetic interaction between PB and ZN. PB is known to induce hepatic enzymes, leading to increased metabolism of concurrently administered drugs. However, the addition of ZN appears to inhibit PB metabolism, resulting in higher serum levels. Previous pharmacokinetic studies in humans and rodents have reported similar interactions, where ZN co-administration led to increased serum concentrations of other ASDs. Our findings suggest that a similar mechanism may be at play in dogs, emphasizing the need for careful monitoring of SPBC when ZN is added to the treatment regimen. Clinical Implications For veterinary practitioners, this study highlights the importance of monitoring serum PB concentrations closely when initiating ZN therapy in dogs with epilepsy. Given the observed increase in SPBC, it is advisable to measure serum levels within two to four weeks of starting ZN and adjust PB dosages accordingly to avoid toxicity. This approach ensures effective seizure control while minimizing adverse effects. Additionally, recognizing the potential for adverse effects, particularly hepatotoxicity, is crucial. Veterinarians should be vigilant for signs of liver dysfunction and adjust the treatment regimen as needed. The findings also underscore the need for individualized treatment plans, considering each dog's unique response to ASD therapy. Limitations in future research This study's limitations include its retrospective design and relatively small sample size, which may limit the generalizability of the findings. Prospective studies with larger populations are needed to confirm these results and further elucidate the pharmacokinetic interactions between PB and ZN. Future research should also explore the underlying mechanisms of these interactions in greater detail, potentially involving more advanced pharmacokinetic modeling and analysis. Additionally, investigating the long-term outcomes of dogs on combination PB and ZN therapy could provide valuable insights into the management of chronic epilepsy in veterinary practice. Conclusion in conclusion, this study demonstrates that the addition of ZN to PB therapy in dogs with epilepsy results in a significant increase in serum PB concentrations. This finding has important implications for the clinical management of canine epilepsy, highlighting the need for careful monitoring and dosage adjustments to maintain therapeutic efficacy and minimize adverse effects. By incorporating these insights into practice, veterinarians can enhance the care and treatment outcomes for dogs with epilepsy.